Pete, um, my first question for you is like, how, how are you reflecting on your time with the Turtles, or at least uh, on the Turtles being a part of your life? Well, they've been a huge part of my life. And uh, it, it's kind of wild that they're still such a big part of it, even though I'm no longer the owner of the property. Um, and it's, it's, it's uh, really wonderful to see the uh, continued love that people have for them. Oh, Rhode Island. Yeah. And the, uh, okay. Probably, probably the best thing is, or the coolest thing is the multi-generational aspect of it, where the there are kids that got into the Turtles when the comic books first came out, and now their kids, or even their kids' kids, are into the Turtles. And that's, that's humbling and just a wonderful feeling. Yeah, I was part of that generation. Um, I had a, a Ninja Turtles cut backpack um, in Puerto Rico when I was five years old. Um, you know, I had my first time at Disney. I had my Ninja Turtle outfit and I had Ninja Turtle big cup. Um, so the turtles were a big part of my life. I even named my hamsters after the turtles. <laughs> I named them all after the turtles and we had an extra one so I named that one Splinter. With the turtles, like, what was it like to, um, you know, just to believe in something until you guys start to see that it was working? Well, the original idea just came out of fun. And, uh, you know, we went back, back in 1983 when we created the characters and the story concept, Kevin and I were desperate to get into the world of comic books as professionals. And that, that uh, inspired us, that desire, and it fired us up to, to the point where we figured that we wouldn't wait for other people to do it for us, we would do it ourselves. And, you know, followed the path of other people like Dave Sim, who did Cerebus, and the, Wendy and Richard Peeney, who did ElfQuest, and we self-published. And it worked out really well, um, and it was it was it was truly a labor of love. You know, we, we just had so much fun doing it. You know, the working together on coming up with the stories and doing the artwork, and you know, it, it was in 1984. No, I think it was 1985. We realized that it was with the first printing of issue number two. I was doing all the business work at the time. Kevin was still living in Maine and I was in Connecticut. And I crunched the numbers for the first printing of issue number two. And I got so excited, I called Kevin up right away. And this was in the days when, you know, a long distance phone call was very expensive. And I told him, Kevin, you know, you're not gonna believe this. We're gonna each make $2,000 clear on this, on this first printing of issue number two. And, and that was the that was the start of it. The the the, uh, the um, fact that we could do something that we absolutely love doing and have total fun with it, and also make enough money to keep ourselves fed and and housed. You know, it was just it was like a dream come true. And if it had just stayed like that, I think we would have been completely happy. Um, but as you know. Uh, it went a lot further than that, and that was a uh, that was pretty amazing. But it was the comic book that was the uh, source of it all, and, and I think the source of the greatest pride and enjoyment that we had in the whole process. It is pretty amazing to consider that the turtles have had such longevity. I mean, it's let's see, 83, it's 35 years. That's over half my life span and uh, so far and it's pretty incredible that they're still going strong you know, i'm sure you know there's a new cartoon series there's a new movie in the works there's all kinds of products you know, unique figures and statues and all you know clothing all, all the whole nine yards and to think that it's still going you know based on what was originally a fun thing for us to do to amuse ourselves and, and get ourselves into the comic book business. It's just pretty amazing to consider that. How do you feel about another uh, live action Turtles, like the, like the original movie? Well, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the first live action Turtle movie. It was, a, I think, a real uh, 
fortuitous combination of circumstances that Steve Barron was the director that they chose, and he had a very artistic eye and a very creative spirit. And he was also able to get the Henson Group involved, Jim Henson and his studio, and they're you know well known for being top-notch uh, animatronic designers and puppeteers, and that was just what the Turtles needed to to uh, sell their reality, if you will, on screen. And. Um, they did a f phenomenal job with that, and the, the first movie, I, I can watch that over and over. It's, it's really a, a very successful work, probably the best live-action adaptation of the Turtles. And uh, I've seen the most recent ones, the Michael Bay produced version. I can't say too too much good for them or about them. They just don't have the spirit that the original one did. You can't love everything about the about the property. There's always going to be something that is less satisfying than other things. But I I love that first movie. It was uh, it was seeing it on the screen was for the first time was kind of surreal to see these characters that Kevin and I had created years earlier just for this comic book that we're self-publishing brought to the, the screen in this incredible form, you know, the Jim Henson puppets and animatronic suit, suits that they created. Just amazing. And uh, we both had a sense of deep gratitude that people were willing to take that kind of chance on our crazy little <coughs> creations. Of course, at that time, just before that, you know, the the, light, the uh, cartoon show had become a very big success. So it wasn't like they were doing, taking too great a risk, but still, it was a risk. Can you talk to me a little bit about the power of uh, putting an idea on paper? One of the great things about being a uh, cartoonist or an artist of any kind, illustrator or whatever, is that you start with, like I'm starting here, with a blank page, a blank surface, and you use your skill, whatever skill you have, to create something that never existed before. Even though this is a this drawing that I'm doing here is very similar to a lot of other drawings I've done in, in the past, it's still unique. It's still a unique piece of creative imagery, and it's a wonderful feeling. You know, it's 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 really what sustained our interest in doing the turtles for so long, working on the comics and so forth. You could definitely say it's an empowering feeling. What's your relationship like with Raphael? Well, he's not my favorite turtle. Donatello is my favorite turtle, but uh, I know Raphael is Kevin Eastman's favorite turtle. Um, I, I, I don't dislike him. I don't hold anything against him as a character. Not, I know that sounds kind of weird, but... Uh, I prefer Donatello because he's more of a thinker and he's more into the wonders and joys of technology. And he is uh, slow to anger, much more so than Raphael is. As you well know, Raphael kind of has a hair trigger. I think Raphael is your favorite. Yeah, my uh, my grandfather that I never really got to spend time with, his name was Raphael. So I, I always gravitated more towards Raphael. And I think in life, as life unfolded, I think I, I'm more, I think I'm a combination of Leo and, and Raph. Like, I feel like I got Raph's temperament and um, energy, because I think he has like a lot of strong energy um, in, in terms of, uh, you know, he, he, I feel like every team needs somebody with him, a little attitude, with a, you know. Um, but also, his temperament comes from a place, you know. But Leo, 
I would say I'm similar to Leo in the sense that I know I have to put the betterment of the group first, of my family first. So I feel like I have a little bit of Leo in me. I know, plus with losing. And then I'm, you know, it's crazy. When I, when I reflect on it, I can probably relate to all of them. But kind I would. A combination of passion and discipline. Passion from Rap and discipline from Leo. That's actually one of the, the coolest things about the whole turtle experience is how much people, especially kids and young people, have gotten out of the, 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 the teachings of the turtles and the, the, uh, how they relate to the different characters in a very intimate way and, and uh, find inspiration in, in those characters. That, that's been a very humbling experience. You know, when, you, when you create something or co-create something that means so much to so many different people, it's, it's a real eye-opening experience. And it's great to hear people's stories you know, about 